Yes, yes, yes. Hello, everybody. Ah. Jason M. Nui's Revolution in the cave. In the cave. We'll have a new look behind us in a minute. Not in a minute. That's what the kids say. In a couple of days. We'll have a new look behind us in a hot minute. This uh, E.T. thing. I think it moved somewhere else. Because I want that back wall to be, you know, the art wall. The bag wall. The, uh, the defunct department store. Just like this one. Gold circle. That's going to be what's going on behind here. So, you know, when this first went up, it was, you know, it was uh, not permanent. It was a working wall. That's what we like to call it, a working wall. I've had this E.T. thing for forever. Um, I first saw it when I was uh, watching some really early YouTube. The Angry Video Game Nerd was, was a uh, channel that I watched like seven years ago. And he, and he had one of these E.T. things hanging. And I found, I found a guy on YouTube that was selling them. And I think it's the same guy that we all bought them from, if we have them. It's like old store stock. And he was giving them away. You know, they're, they're, it was like 14 bucks. And this used to be attached. And it used to have a string. And you would hang it. Like it was a store signage. Um, it's not like a reprint. It's, it's like the stuff from then. <laughs> it's the stuff from then. And like I said, he must have had a ton of them. I think that's where we all got them from. But anyway, I'll put that. So that, that is, that is like, never really found a home. In the early days of the room and the channel, uh, that thing hung. It hung appropriately from the drop ceiling. But I can't do it now. It, it, if it hangs, it takes up too much space. And uh, the string broke and all that. So whatever. Well, that's not what we're here to do. That's not what we're here to do. It is Saturday. I did promise you three videos this weekend. Uh, we've already done one. The pickups. And now we're going to do uh, my Mount Rushmore of Christmas memories. That's right. And nothing, nothing says Christmas like October 1st. That's right. October 1st. The family is uh, currently wrapping up the... Uh, Halloween, Halloween decorations, the in, indoor Halloween decorations are spread out through the house. Uh, I am still sick. I have decided that I have a cold. Uh, the cough is not going away. That's annoying. And now, what do you know, the 10-year-old, Liam, has a sore throat. And when Liam has a sore throat, that leads to a fever. And for 10 years, that leads to throwing up. So we might have some vomiting this evening. It's just a nightmare. You know, you get a cold. Freaking cold. Dad gets a cold. Liam's going to have a fever and throw up. What's with kids and throwing up? Right? Kids and throw up. It's part of, it's part of childhood. You're just going to throw up when you have a cold. It's ridiculous. All right, my top four Christmas memories. Capping, kicking off, not capping off. Capping off would be ending. Kicking off the season of Yule in our house, right? The Yuletide season is upon us. What, you say? It's October 1st, you, you lunatic. Yes, it is, but... Uh, in 30 days, our Christmas tree comes out of the garage and stands proudly in our living room. Our Christmas decorations come out of the box. The Halloween decorations go away immediately. The Christmas decorations get hung. And we have two solid months of Christmas. It's the way I do it. It's the way I do it. Why? Because Christmas ended too early when I was a kid. Way too early. Way too early. You know, so I want my kids to have two months of Christmas. Right? That's okay. Two months of Christmas. All right. Top four. The Mount Rushmore of Christmas memories. Christmas memories. Uh, number one. 
Number one, and these are non-present related. No presence here. Number one is what I lovingly named the Christmas countdown. What's the Christmas countdown, you say? Well, I like to think I invented it. I like to think that it was my brain child. I created the Christmas countdown in uh, 1985. Yeah. Uh, my sisters and I would take a uh, big piece of poster board and uh, we would draw a very primitive Christmas tree on it. And a primitive Christmas tree is a triangle. Mm -hmm. A triangle with a rectangle stump. There's your Christmas tree. Two shapes. And in that Christmas tree, we would write the numbers 1 through 25. And then we would circle the numbers 1 through 25. And those would get colored in as the days passed. So they would be bulbs, right? So we would color the tree green, like, you know, not, not getting the bulbs, leaving the bulbs white. And then as each day passed, we would color in the bulbs. And it was called The Christmas Countdown. And then on the back, we would write out what exactly happens on Christmas Eve. And that, uh, I'll save that story because that's on the Mount Rushmore. But when the children were created, <clears throat> I started back up the Christmas countdown. And here, I have them all saved. Here is one from 2020. Now, we have two months of Christmas in our house, so we have to draw primitively. We are not artists. We have to draw something that represents November. And so we drew a pilgrim's hat. And as you can see, the children in 2020 colored in all the days in November and forgot to color in the hat. But then on the other side of the poster is that primitive Christmas tree with all of the bulbs colored in for all the days of the week. The 2022 Nup Christmas Countdown. There it is. And this hangs in our kitchen on the door that leads out to our garage. And every morning the children fight over who is going to color in a date. And like I said, I have about eight of these. I think we started it with Liam when he was about two. And we have I have them all. I have them all down here. They're folded in half. And they're they're tucked away in the back. That is Christmas memory number one. That is the Mount Rushmore item number one, the Christmas countdown, the annual Christmas countdown. Uh, number two. Number two. I want to save the, the good one for last. Uh, the actual Christmas Eve, which obviously has to be on the Christmas countdown. Uh, December, period. December, as a kid, is, is a marvelous month. And uh, December... I mean, November felt nice as a kid. November feels nice now, because I start Christmas so early. I mean, September feels nice. September, I start buying Christmas presents, right? Non-Santa presents. So I started really early. But back then, it, it wasn't started so early. In fact, I don't think my parents Christmas shopped until December. I, I'm just guessing. So the month of December back then was incredible. Um, there was magic in the air. And I went to a Catholic school. And so they really, really, you know, hammered it with, with you know, the Catholic Christmas values and, and traditions and beliefs. So, you know, there was a lot of baby Jesus in the manger drawings. And, um, you know, we had like a play every year. You know, I was one of the wise men, one of the three wise men. And, uh, of course, I brought Frankenstein as a gift to baby Jesus. Frankenstein. 
That's right. Hey. Uh, so the you know the the especially as a young kid, <coughs> this is we're just going to share this together. I'm not I'm not editing those sneezes, right? This is just that's the way it's going to happen. It might happen a few more times tonight. But the the Christmas themed art projects were just awesome. You know the Advent wreath, right? Was that was that Christmas? The uh, three purple candles and one pink one, or the three pink candles and one purple one for each week in December. And when you lit the purple one, it was Christmas week. We would bring, we would do those in in, in art class at St. Pius, St. Pius Catholic School. And obviously, the the magic in the air was spread amongst your peers. And uh, you know, you come in, you come in Monday morning after a fresh set of Saturday morning cartoons, and you guys are talking about what is on your Christmas list. What is on the list? And you knew, you knew that you were really going to have to step up your survival game if you were going to get through December in one piece. Because it was too intense. It was too intense, especially back in the day of must-have presents. Change your life presents. Okay, you knew that there was a possibility that by the end of the month you were going to get new additions to your LJN Federation. Right? And that, that's an exciting month. All of the Christmas specials on TV that were on that month, you know, the Rankin and Bass stuff, you know, Rudolph and Frosty, you know, Santa Claus is coming to town, uh, the Charlie Brown Christmas, and then just whatever, you know, the Christmas story, you know, Back then, it, well, no, nah, I can't say back then, because even today, if you have cable or, like, YouTube TV or something, there's Christmas specials on all over the place. So I can't say that they don't do that anymore, because they obviously do. But, you know, all of your sitcoms had Christmas episodes, and, you know, it was all happening in the month of December. You know, it was, it was a good television month. It was a good school month. It was the countdown. So December, December as an entity of its own, sits on my Mount Rushmore of Christmas memories. Uh, the third Christmas memory, we're skipping right to Christmas morning on this one, because i got to save Christmas Eve for the end here. But Christmas morning, uh, you know, I've known some families that um, left their gifts pretty much where they sat all day long. And, and maybe even for days, or dare I say weeks later, they sat underneath the Christmas tree in the living room, right? I had a couple of friends who did that. I still have family, you know, the in-laws do that. They just leave their presents all over the living room like savages. But even from an early age, as soon as the last present was unwrapped, I just stood back and took inventory. And then I began, I began packing away the stuff. I began taking the hall to my room rearranging stuff, setting stuff up on shelves, you know, setting the display up, taking the LJNs out of the package and getting them in the ring and getting them ready. I used to store all my figures in the ring, standing up, of course. You don't just pile them in there. You know, you're trying to be civilized. So I used to stand them all up, and then, and then when I got too many, I would set some of them along outside the ring. And it always took forever to get play going, but that's how I displayed them. And then years later, I put them in a shelf. But, you know, I would get everything ready. I would get everything set up. If I got some Nintendo games or Atari games or something, I'd get them all out of the package and put them on the dresser where all the games were. You know, if I got music cassettes, I would rip those up, get the cellophane off of them, and set them up nice on the, you know, kind of like, kind of like today. You know, the setup. The setup was a big, big part of Christmas Day for me. You know, I, I had to touch everything. I had to open everything. I had to get everything going. And you can be assured that, you know, wrestling, the LJN wrestling play was happening on Christmas Day with whatever new figures I got, for sure. <coughs> I remember very specifically taking the pogo ball out into, uh, we lived in an apartment at the time, and taking the pogo ball outside 
and um, trying to pogo ball in the, uh, you know, in the parking lot of Christmas morning. Absolutely. And then, and then it was, and then, you know, it was kind of crushed. It was kind of crushed because after my, you know, idiot parents got divorced, <clears throat> we'd have to go to my dad's on Christmas Day. And that was the all-time bummer of bummers. That was the worst of the worst. Not because I didn't love my dad, but because all my stuff, my good stuff came from my grandmother and my mother. The sweaters and the, and the non-kid stuff came from my dad and his mother. And I just knew I was going to be away from my stuff for way too long. I, I hated it. Um, and it and it carries on today. I will open every single package that these children get on Christmas morning. I will put together so much stuff Christmas morning. Um, it'll just be one after the next. I mean, I have to... We have you know, yard bag upon yard bag of, of, uh, you know, cardboard that I have to take to the dumpster at my office, right? I, every, every Christmas, I'm just loading up that dumpster with cardboard because everything gets ripped open out of the package. I have to make sure that there's batteries in the house because my kids do the same thing that I did. They get into their stuff, they touch everything, they open everything, and they play with Everything. Everything. So the setup, I'll call it the setup, the Christmas Day setup, is on Mount Rushmore. Now, our final item on the Rushmore of Christmas memories. For me, it's an absolute no-brainer. It is Christmas Eve. Christmas Eve is, and always will be, more special to me than Christmas Day. Uh, Christmas Eve is magical. Christmas Eve is and was magical. Uh, the was part defines me as a human. Christmas Eve um, was the greatest day of the year by, by a landslide. Birthdays, don't care. You know, other holidays, couldn't care less. Halloween, don't care. First day of summer vacation, couldn't care less. Christmas Eve defeats all of them soundly. Um, sorry, my nose is running. Um, we had such a routine on Christmas Eve uh, that was so special. Uh, for for most of my childhood, we would go to my grandmother's, and uh, obviously when I started living with them, I would just stay there. But uh, before I lived with my grandparents, uh, we would go there, and we would begin our Christmas Eve at like 3 o'clock in the afternoon. And um, walking into my grandmother's house with the Christmas music playing, you know, the Christmas cassettes, all the classics that we all know and love today. The Bing Crosby Christmas, you know, um, Jingle Bell Rock, Brenda Lee, you know, the Elvis Christmas, my goodness. And then, of course, Feliz Navidad, which was always playing as my, you know, as, as the family members drank a little bit more throughout the night, the lyrics to Feliz Navidad were, you know, hammered, butchered, slaughtered. I think my grandmother at one point called it Felice Moppy Dop. Yeah. Big ups to Grandma. Felice Moppy Dop. Anyway. Uh, you walk into the Christmas music. You walk into the smell of food. We had pretty much the same menu. My grandfather was Polish. He was a, he was um, not a biological grandfather, but he was he was there when I was born. Um, I never I never knew my real grandfather. So he was Polish, and so my grandmother would get fresh Polish sausage from Buffalo, and uh, she she was not a chef. My grandmother was not a chef, and we are not cultural, so we don't have a a cultural tradi tradition of food like Italians and and and, and you know the like. So our Christmas Eve menu consisted of Polish sausage, 
uh, macaroni and tuna salad. My grandma would, would make like a rigatoni with sauce. Um, like a meat tray, you know, like rolled up cold cuts. And then like pickles and olives and chips and dip. Boom. That was our, that was our Christmas, you know, dinner. And it was the greatest dinner I've ever had in my life. Oh, cocktail weenies and, and barbecue sauce. Sometimes deviled eggs. I would take that over any meal you could possibly think of. Because that, that meal is so iconic. Did we ever sit down on Christmas Eve to eat? No way. There was no way you were getting these children to sit down and eat. So we would just pick the food, make a Polish sausage sandwich, go downstairs, watch the Christmas story, listen to the Christmas music. The, the old people were starting to drink the beer. They were starting to get rowdy and dance and all that. And um, we'd get a present, you know. We'd get a present on Christmas Eve. Um, yeah, we, we'd open one present and, uh, I don't know, by 9 o'clock... 9.30, we were piling in the car to go back home. And uh, my sisters and I would all try to sleep in the same room together. And my youngest sister and I would always make a plan to sneak out at 3 o'clock in the morning and look at the tree. And I, I think we did that a couple of years, maybe most years. Some years we missed. Um, but we would try to sleep, you know, we would try to sleep. And they'd fall asleep, and I wouldn't. And uh, I'd probably be the one sneaking out to look at the presents. And and it was just, um, you know, it was just unbeatable. It was it was an un, unbeatable, uh, unduplicatable night, Christmas Eve, best night ever. And I I, I try to uh, give the children a, a great Christmas Eve at home. Um, and and they have a good time. They have a great time, but uh, it's not the same. It's it's just not the same. You know, it's not the same. Uh, you know, they get bored throughout the day, and and I don't know. It just it gets it's weird. It's I don't know what it is. You know, they're super excited about Christmas. Obviously, they're excited about Christmas morning. But I don't know what I don't I don't know where the magic of Christmas Eve went. I don't know. Maybe I'm just talking junk. Like maybe. Maybe they are ridiculously excited. I don't know. I mean, Liam's eyes light up when he sees Christmas decorations out in stores, like, early. He just gets real, like, like real, like, sentimental about it. So anyway, that's that. That's the uh, Mount Rushmore of Christmas memories. Certainly tell me your stories. And, uh... Yeah, that will we'll usher in will usher in the holidays. Here we go. I know it's October first. Don't don't look at me like that. You know I know what I'm doing. So, all right, folks, that's that. Christmas uh, Mount Rushmore memories done, and uh, obviously many 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 more Christmas themed episodes to come in the next couple of months. And hopefully, this head cold of mine goes away soon. That's all. We will see you all next time. Merry Christmas and good night now.